The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey, good evening, everybody. It's Mike Pisani with Alpha Shark. How is everybody doing out there tonight? Awesome. Hey, Chris, Kurt, Samir, AS, Scott. Can you guys see my screen okay? Ray, Doyle, love it. David, Zerna. Perfect. Okay, so um, got a long webinar for you tonight. So I, I took some time to put this together. So thanks, Tara. Thanks, Ted. Appreciate that. <laughs> All right. So um, let's just dive in. Let's get going. Uh, Samir, I've been having issues with the recording, so I'm trying to, but I can't guarantee it. Perfectly honest with you. <clears throat> sometimes it does, and sometimes it just craps out after five minutes, and I don't even know about it until I get to the end and, and turn it off. So fair warning to all. You're going to want to watch this one, too. You're going to like this one. Okay, so let's get started. Um, nice crowd here tonight. So tonight I want to talk to you guys about trend, ch uh, trend changes and recognizing a change. And I think that's something we can all kind of uh, get behind right now is trying to recognize when we're going to get a new trend change in this market or is this the new trend, right? So uh, if you want to get a hold of me, you can email me at mike at smartoptiontrading.com. My Twitter handle is at optionsmike. You guys should all follow me. If you're not, I put tons of information out there for you. And you should follow me on YouTube at uh, youtube.com slash option mic. So you can see all my free videos and webinars that I put up there as well and get informed when I go live. All right. Enough of that. Let's move on. Risk disclaimer. Day trading, short term trading, options trading and futures trading are extremely risky undertakings. They generally are not appropriate for someone with limited capital, little or no trading experience and or low tolerance for risk. Never execute a trade unless you can afford to and are prepared to lose your entire investment. All trade, trading operations involve serious risk and you can lose your entire investment. No trades are recommendations or advice and we cannot be sued for losses of capital. All trades are for educational purposes only. Contact your broker or RIA for execution, margin, or other capital requirements. Everyone watching this presentation adheres to all disclaimers on www.alphashark.com and myself, Mike Pisani. Sure, Scott. Got it? Grab a screenshot if you want. Perfect. Okay, so today I want to go over identifying trend changes, and I have a lot of information to go over with you. Uh, talk about market sentiment. I'll talk to you about what I do in my offerings, and if we have time, I'll go to my charts. I do have a lot of information I want to go through with you tonight, so I want to spend more time teaching you guys tonight than anything else. I hope that's uh, what you want to hear. Okay, so how do I identify a trend change? So market trend changes. So first thing you need to know about trend changes, they're usually a process. And the stronger the market, the bull or the bear market, uh, you know, usually they, they, that, they, it's a topping, you know, bull markets when they top out, it's a process. They generally don't just roll over and die. Bear markets when they reverse, it's usually a process. They don't just shoot straight up. So they rarely change overnight. Now, that, that being said, obviously, there's always, you know, exceptions to the rule when you have an event that takes place, right, a black swan type event. But generally, these things are processes. Once the trend changes, don't expect a quick resolution. And really, the longer we've been in the type of market, whether it's a bull market or a bear market, uh, usually you need more consolidation. So, you know, if you think about now, we've been in a multi many year bull market in this here, right? We just had a massive 15-month run before we hit this February pullback, you know, correction. And, you know, so I wouldn't expect us just to shoot right back up, and we haven't, okay? So, you know, the longer you've been in a, in, in a single trend, usually the longer it takes to get out of the change. So don't expect that V bounce. We haven't gotten it here yet. But there's normally plenty of warning signs. And let's go into how we can identify these and how we could have seen this one coming and what we should be looking for to show that we're getting out of this or a change. Okay, first off, big, big believer and become the contrarian. When you see CNBC has uh, people out there saying this market's never pulling it back again, 
you guys should just be afraid, right? You know, same thing, the reverse of that, when they have every bear that's been wrong for the last six or seven years out there screaming this market's going to come down 30%, 40%, whatever, pick a number, right? You guys can put one out there. You guys have all heard these guys out there. And they keep touting these guys out left and right. I usually know that we're coming into some type of bottom, short term or otherwise. Okay. So, you know, my advice is try to tune the noise out. But when you're hearing this from either side, take the contrarian view. The retail investor. You're going to hear this said all the time, but when you start hearing them pounding the table, the retail investors back in the market, it's time to get out. It's time to start looking to the sidelines or throwing up protection. Because I hate to say it, but the retail investor is almost always the last one in and the one that usually gets stuck holding, you know, sitting there holding the stock when everybody else is already sold and they're the last one in, they don't know what to do. So when you start hearing that conversation, the retail investors back, and we started seeing that in December and especially in January, they really started hyping that. That was a good warning sign. Sentiment. Is it running too bullish or too bearish? Watch for reversal. When the markets, and we're going to go over some sentiment stuff, get just everybody's too bulled up, you can expect some type of hit. Likewise, when everybody's extremely bearish and there's, everybody's protected out the yin-yang, you look for some type of reversal because, you know, they love and love to squeeze people in the markets. You know, the biggest thing they love to do is to knock everybody out before they give that big move. So, you know, in January, they were loading up for protection. We'll go over it. Something else, number of stops making 52 weeks highs or 52 week lows. You know, when this starts to tail off, but the market's still moving up or moving down with 52 week lows, it's usually a sign that we're coming to a bottom. We're going to go in and show you how you can get this. Everything I'm giving you here today, for the most part, is free, guys. So you don't have to go out and spend money somewhere else. You can go out and get this information for free, and I'm going to show you exactly where to get it. So I hope you, I hope you appreciate that. Some additional information. Technical breaks. When you break a long-term trend line or critical moving averages is usually a sign of a trend change. Right? We're going to show you the market broke the 8 to 21 day, and now it's broken the 200 day as of yesterday, right? Trend changes. Reversal candles. You guys also may hear them called hammer candles or inverted hammer candles. When you see them on any type of chart, but especially on daily charts or weekly or monthly, it's usually the sign of some type of reversal in the pattern. We're going to give you examples. We're going to go into that in depth. Option flow, this is my favorite. But a change in the flow, does it become protective? Does it go bearish? Does it get bullish? Or the worst is absolutely nothing. And we're kind of in that nothing phase right here, right now. And that's the worst because that means even they're confused. So if you're confused, don't feel bad right now. I will tell you that a lot of the big players in the market that are buying these options, the big guys are confused. They're not quite sure what's going on right now either or where things are going. So... You know, you can pat yourself on the back if you're confused, you have great company. And the VIX, it's a measurement of fear. When it stays elevated, when the price of the market, the, the, the long day, when the market price action is strong, it's trying to tell you something. Last year, what did we have last year in the, in the markets? Who can tell me about the VIX? Who wants to try to answer this? Dead, very low, Doyle, right, very low. Would you guys say, right, was it normal? No, it was not normal, right, record lows, exactly. So last year we had a trend, a different trend. We had a trend change from 2016 through 2000, in 2017, right? Now we've changed again. So now the, the VIX is telling us that, that that low fear market that was unheard of is now gone we've had a change and people some people still haven't recognized this, this is why i bring it up they keep expecting the vix to come crashing back down and it's you know it's just not doing that we'll go into that so sentiment two easy free ways to track sentiment i go over with him with them with you every webinar first of all cnn fear and greed index it's updated daily and throughout the day and it also gives historical information just google it all right. It'll show you where we are today, where we were recently and where we were a month ago and a year ago. 
and you can see the change here. The change here was in January, we were all the way up green. Look at now, for the last month, we're down in the single digits. I will warn you, this thing can stay down here for a long, long time. I've even seen this thing pin at zero and one for a week or two. So this can stay down here. It's showing you that you know there's big time fear in this marketplace, more than maybe being let on in the VIX. All right, stock twits, another place you can go to. Go to stock twits, type in the symbol SPY, Q's, IWM, and on you see down here, I'm gonna give you more examples later, we go over this, but it shows you what the retail sentiment is. So right now it's 47%, but you can see back in January, the beginning of February, just before we sold off, we were up over 60%, right? So it's showing you how sentiment is. So when sentiment usually gets too far down, when we start getting down to this area or a little bit lower, you start looking for some type of reversal, even if it's short term, okay? Two easy ways to track sentiment free. A new one for you. Stocks making 52 weeks highs or 52 weeks low. Usually when we have a market starts to show signs of exhaustion before they roll over. When you have a market that's making fewer and fewer all time 52 week highs, it's usually a sign that the market's about to come down. Likewise, when you have a bear market that is making fewer and fewer 52 week lows, it's usually a sign that we're about to reverse. Look at this chart. Look at just before February. What do you see there? Who's looking at it? Who can read this? Look at the drop. Okay, we were up around 350 stocks making new all-time highs, and we dropped all the way down to the day before February to 50. Big warning sign, guys. Big, big warning sign here. Okay, you can get this. I leave the screen up. Grab a screen print out of it or just Google it. Yep, it's indicating, Scott, that the market's gotten very thin, right? We have very few leaders left in the market. We're getting very, very thin. Thin markets are usually vulnerable to corrective type activities, right? Lack of leadership. And you guys have heard me for the last couple of months screaming lack of leadership all the way through January, in January, okay? There's the address I pulled that from. It's free. Google it. Make a screenshot of it. You can get that. Thanks for it. Also on this site, you can get the number making 52 week lows as well, okay? You can get them off of that. Uh, Scott, I'm not 100% sure if it's real time or end of day, perfectly honest with you. I started asking myself why I wasn't looking this and I went out and found it. And I said, you know what? This is a great indicator. I should be using this more often. So uh, I don't know. I know you can go back up to like 20 years on this. You can go short term. Uh, I think you can do daily charts on it as well. So it might be real time. Not 100% sure, but I'll let you know. You can check it out. Anyway, it's free and easy to use. Go ahead and grab yourself one. Okay, technical breaks. When we break a fast trend line or fast moving averages and the inability to regain them. So first off on this chart, what's the one thing that should have had everybody worried in January, long before we got to February? What's this chart doing that markets rarely do, especially ETFs? Thank you, Scott. Parabolic. Scott, are you in my service? I don't think you are. If you send me, I'm going to send you an email. Send me an email. I'll give you a free month for that answer. I'll do one more of these before we're done. Send me an email later on, and I'll hook you up by tomorrow morning, All right? So this should have been your first warning sign, right? When things, markets and ETFs, especially ETFs, go like this. Uh, Ted, let's look back real quick. Sorry. Go back. Uh, it, would, it wasn't as big, right? And this was just, uh, we probably had some waffling going on in the market back then, Ted, right? But it came in and briefly, and it came right back up. Here, we never came back up, right? 
and we came down over time, just a little bit different. Again, it's not going to be foolproof, Ted. I'm giving you things you can look at to figure things out to take to you know to help make those decisions. Put them all together, right? It's like trying to put all the pieces of a puzzle together. Kate, uh, I think that's for his coming up. Uh, he's next on up, Kate. He might have misstepped that with me or him. I know he is going to be doing a free boot camp and giving that out to people. So I'll let him know, and if you're here, I'll, I'll, I'll let him know that as well. You're welcome. All right, so back to this chart. First of all, we had this huge parabolic move. Second, we came down, we broke the eight day, and then broke the 21 day. This should have been a sign it was time to get out of Dodge. Something else you could look at on here, how extended off the moving averages it were, especially off the 21 day. Again, ETFs do not like to get very extended off the eight and the 21 day. They like to keep them nice and tight. Look at the rest of last year. Look how we stayed close to it. Every time we start to get away, we pull back and reconnect, pull back and reconnect, right? We didn't do this here. We just ran away, had to end eventually, okay? So warning signs. This is a three-year chart of the uh, s and the SPY. If you guys saw me on TD Ameritrade on Monday morning, I brought this up. I asked them to pull it up. They didn't, though. Three years. We have not been below the 200-day moving average on the SPY now for three years. Three years. Kate, do me a favor. Send me an email to Mike at SmartOptionTrading.com. I'll make sure that gets taken care of for you. Um, three years. Okay, February 2016. Uh, I'm sorry, two years. Two years. February 2016 was the last time we were below it, other than this brief dip, right? We've held it. We haven't been close to it. Trend change. It's showing us something's different up here. We haven't tested this in a long, long time. Okay. You guys have questions so far? Just ask them as we go. I'll try to keep this interactive. All right. So, again, you start putting all these pieces together here. Things are different. Let's talk about reversal candles. Hammer time. I love hammer candles. My favorite things to trade. You can trade them on any time frame, but I like to use them best on dailies. So a hammer candle is a bullish reversal candle or a bearish reversal candle, okay, made up of just one candle found in price charts, right? The candle looks like a hammer. It has a long lower wick, a short body at the top, and the candlestick with little or no upper wick. The reverse in bear markets has a a, hot, a long wick and a very small lower wick, right? So I have two examples up here for you. You can see they look like, they look like an inverted hammer. They can be red or green, does not matter. What we're looking for on these though, is we're really looking for them to come in and to trade below a previous candle, reverse and take it back. Those are the type of hammer candles we are really, really looking for. We're looking for hammer reversal candles, either up or down, okay? So this is the SPY since the break. Now, the SPY doesn't always, we don't always get them, right? We did not get a reversal candle on this day at the top left, right, on the break when we broke the highs. Sometimes, guys, we get it in the futures market. You have to look at the slash ES. Even if you're not a futures trader, I'm not a futures trader, guys. But even if you're not a futures trader, sometimes you have to look at these to see if that's what they're coming in. Yeah, it is a harmony, correct, guys. But we did not get a reversal. I'm, 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 I'm trying to keep it simple today. Not everybody knows a lot about this. We'll do it. I'm tell you what. You guys remind me. I'll do a, a session on candlesticks. Deal. But I want to teach this one because there's value in this one. Okay. Watch when we come down. First blue arrow. We get a reversal candle. Shoot back up, two-day move that gives us a reversal candle back down. Then we got the big reversal off the 200-day, right? That gave us a one, two, three, four, five, six-day move before we got a reversal candle again, okay? You can be playing these. You can use these to get in and out, right? Four-day move down, got a very small, not big, but a small reversal candle. Four days up, another reversal candle down, and we engulfed the previous candle. That's even more powerful, right? We took it, we went above and we took out the entire previous day's candle. Very bearish. Usually a sign, guys, to get the freak out of Dodge. Not just a reversal candle, we engulfed it. Get out. Get out of Dodge. 
let the price action prove it's it's wrong okay came down four days later we got a reversal candle that gave us a multi-day run until we got up into this last reversal candle and since then we have not had a reversal candle on the spy can you guys see that look at those candles none of them meet the criteria today's candle while it was a nice inside day and it got the algos went nuts on the fake amazon news we did not trade below yesterday's low doesn't mean that this can't be the bottom but we didn't trade below yesterday's low right so here we are still looking for that nice big reversal candle to call a bottom on the markets you guys make sense to you any questions on this Hmm. They can be very small sometimes. They can be large. The bigger they are, generally the more powerful they are. Okay, honest answer. Bigger they are, the more powerful they are, and the further they're going to take you. Okay, option flow. You guys know I'm a big options guy. People in my service they follow me because I call out the option flow. It's often for me one of the biggest players tell me basically tells me exactly what i want to know the sentiment is in the market it tells me what the big players are thinking and what's really going on in their head so if we were to take the last there you go ted the bigger they are the harder they fall the last half of year or so and put it into the option flow i can i can sum it up for you very quickly august through january call buying dominated huge call buying also, huge hedging on the VXX. Everybody knows what the VXX is? VXX is a VIX product. It tracks the VIX. It's an ETF that tracks the VIX. So a lot of people trade that and hedge with it. I was hedged going into this fall off using the VXX. I've done a couple webinars on that. Okay? So that was how things were going. And the market just kind of kept going up and grinding along. January. Call buying continued to the end, but it really narrowed, guys. It started going to select names and market leaders, a sure sign that there was a problem. We kept saying we need some rotation and we weren't getting it. We were looking for rotation into different sectors, you know, the banks or energy or biotech or utilities or you know, consumer staples. But all they kept doing was sticking with the same dozen or so names showing us that this market was starting to have a problem. February comes. Uh, sorry, massive call bets come in, screaming on the VIX and the VXX. Uh, protection went up quickly, big time put buying on the SPY, the Qs, the IWM, individual names. You know, cats and dogs, Armageddon, right? So, you know, pull up our little chart here real quick for you. Put this in perspective. Get my little inspection there. Okay. Through this area through here, all call buying. Lots and lots of protection starts going up on the on the on the VXX. Okay, and just buying calls, most of them expiring worthless, but they keep rolling them out and getting new ones. All right, then we come up into here and we don't get the rotation. It's just the same names and the index is grinding higher, higher, and higher and higher. We break and they come screaming in and they're still buying all the way into the lows here. On this day, I remembered people in my service, they were buying puts left and right even though the market started to reverse they still stayed with it okay fast forward feb lows big buyers come screaming in and they came in for names like micron and crm and intel and microsoft among others uh, netflix amazon i mean think of all the names that have been leading us through the last month or so they came big they came often they call the bottom in these names all right easy to spot that was this day right here caught it in the service we got long we got long a lot of us into micron and some of them to intel right we started buying into this dip because they were coming in for it they made us known i think that day in my micron they bought about five million dollars worth of calls into that into that day in that low in, in in an hour space or so there wasn't like you know all throughout the day rapidly came in came screaming for the name okay Options flow telling us to be aggressive. Mid-March, call buying stops dead. Big warning sign as we slowly pull back to Fed Day. So I could tell you right now when this all stopped, it's real easy for me to go in here, and I'll make this nice and big for you.
this day right here, right? March 9th was the last day we had any really good call buying in this marketplace. Look how long ago that was. I'm not saying there hasn't been call buying. What I'm telling you is that everything changed that day. They weren't buying the next couple of days. As this market slowly pulled back into the Fed day candle back here, right? We had seven down days in a row. They weren't buying it. No buying until Fed day. Fed day was the first day they did some buying, but they quickly got beat up. Okay. It's telling. They weren't buying for screaming for protection. They weren't buying puts. Okay. Come back to that in a second, Ted. Last two weeks, massive protections, huge blocks of calls being bought, but mostly stock replacement. Can't tell you how many times I call I call out a big stock uh, options buy a block of calls, only to see a large block of stock go off at the same time. So do you guys understand what I mean by stock replacement? Who knows what stock replacement is? Okay, stock replacement. Yep, Chris has got it, using options for stock. Nope, not even a synthetic play, guys. I'm, I'm being very, very simple. Nope, you're, you're overthinking things. The player has a large quantity of stock, and they decide to sell the stock, and they buy options to replace it. Okay, so what they're doing is the, exactly selling the stock to buy the options. Basically, they're taking risk off, but they don't want to have nothing in play in case they're wrong. Make sense? So they're selling their stock while they can get a good price for it. So maybe they're selling $30 million or $3 million worth of stock, and they're replacing it with a couple hundred thousand dollars in options or a million dollars in options, which they can take off at any time. Less risk, cheaper price. You got it, Chris. That's what stock replacement is. We've been seeing a ton of that the last couple of weeks ton of it no joseph it can be further out in time it doesn't have to be current month purchase they they'll go out to wherever they want they usually buy more time to be honest with you usually these guys buy time because they're not really trying to throw the money away right they still want it to work so for today for example what was one of the big ones i saw um can't remember Uh, X wasn't today, David. Uh, X wasn't today. No, no, no. Option doesn't have to be. Again, I'm not talking about synthetic stock, Charlie. He's saying option has to be 80 delta for stock replacement. Doesn't have to be in the money. All they're doing is they're selling their common position. They're getting rid of their stock, and they're saying, I don't want to be completely out there, so I'm buying some options just in case I'm wrong. So in other words, Let's give here. Um, I think CRM had one the other day. Somewhere up in here, I think if I remember right, somebody came in and they sold a ton of uh, stock on CRM and, and bought um, options. I think they were the 130s out in September, if I remember correctly. All they're doing there is saying, I don't want to own the stock anymore, but in case I'm wrong, I still want to have some exposure to this stock in case it keeps going higher. To me, it's not really bullish. To me, it's more basically it's, it's, it's bearish. Some people think it's bullish. A lot of times when you watch um, Fast Time and the Nigerians do a pump, a lot of that times that stuff is tied to stock. To me, it's not really bullish because often – Bullish to me is when somebody's willing to put $30 million, a big fund of work to work, taking $30 million out and replacing with a million dollars worth of options. That's not bullish to me, right? Does that sound bullish? Now, somebody coming in, not tied to stock and buying a million dollars of options, that's extremely bullish. But selling a bunch of stock and buying of much less options on something to me is not an extremely bullish. My point of view, Mike's view. Not trying to say my view. If they really were bullish, they'd be keeping the stock and then buying options to go with it. That would be really bullish. Okay. 
So the last two weeks, mostly uh, call, you know, stock replacement, short-term call buying, mostly small stuff. So let's go back um, to the SPY here. All right. What they've been doing the last two weeks on these green days, the good days, they've been squeezing the shorts, buying lots of options, calls on the SPY on either Monday, Wednesday, or Thursday's expiration. They have not been buying mostly long-term calls on these things. Craig, they could have any expiration date, but usually they go out in time. Usually they buy three or four or five months out in advance. They don't tend to go short term on their replacement when it comes in. When they put large block stock, they want time for to be able to change it, to, to adjust it. And they buy with options. No, they're not trying to keep it hidden. These are blocks. These things are blatant. These things show up. These things on my radar come up like a red flag. Um, God, I can't think of some names today. I'm drawing a blank here. Uh, here you go. Uh, five days ago, ABBA, the April 74 call, 785,000. Over 3K of them were bought, right? And then, uh, you know, a minute later, I saw a block of uh, 300,000 plus shares fire off with it. So they tied it to the stock. I track this option through, I have a software tool I use called Trade Alert. And so I track it through there and I share that out with people in my service, Joseph, for people who are asking how I track this. I have a customized version of it that I track with that. So through this last week and a half, two weeks, we've had no good signals. We've seen big time put buying. They've gotten run over a couple of times. We've seen big time weekly short term call buying. They've worked for them. There's still tons of protection going on out there. Lots of deep out of the money puts been bought on the indexes um, to 240s to 244s. There was tons of them bought last week. So just keep in mind, there's a lot of protection up right now. Any questions, more questions on option flow? Okay. The VIX, all right, trend change. This is a couple year chart of the VIX, right? What do we do here? Every time we popped for the last couple of years and we got out of the Bollinger Bands, right, we got a reversal. And it was quick. We came crashing back down. I know these are small candles here. Um, what's happened here? In the last, this pop, this huge pop we had in the VIX, right, we have not come all the way back down again like we used to. We're staying at an elevated level. We are now trading between 14 and let's call it 26 here. Keith, I just I just told you I, I have a program from Trade Alert that tracks it for me that I have customized to my settings for option flow. Scott will come into that. There you go. So I use that and then I share that with people in my service. And uh, where I moderate in uh, at Alpha Shark as well. Okay, so we've had a massive change here. Are we likely to get back to 50? Probably not. Can't say rule it out, but 50 is usually the historical high of any of these big moves in the VIX, unless there's a black swan event. Okay, so this event, if you look at this high too, why why did we get up here? Who can tell me why we popped so high so fast on here? Free month of my service is the person that can answer that. Nope, dead, not trade war. Chris, you don't count. But you have it right, Chris. Not interest rates. Nope, nope, nope. Vinit, you, you don't count either, but you got it right. Come on, somebody's got to have this. Nothing to do with that. Let's go. Come on, look at the chart, guys. 
People in my service have it. What caused this artificial massive move all the way up to 50? What happened that night? What, what went on in the overnight market that night? Not. I was giving out a free month of my service, Scott. I'm trying to make you think. <laughs> no, nope, you guys are too far in the future on the potential trade war. That wasn't it. I'll tell you what, Eric. I'm going to give it to you. Close enough. Excessive shorting the VIX, not quite. It was the unwinding of the ETNs, right? The ETNs, the, the SPXY, the, those, those ETFs that blew up in the after hours that night because they were all leveraged on future contracts and got destroyed. The VIX spiked on the open to 50 because of all that unwinding, all those future contracts, right, had to be undone. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> all right, hit me up, Eric. You're welcome. It's too much leverage, right? Sorry, BW. Um, I'll tell you what. I'm in a good mood. Last one. It was close, but not quite what I was looking for. You guys send me an email. Those who have, I gave my email address to the three of you, and you get you all three get a free month. I'll be fair. All right. So that's what took place there, right? So are we likely to get back to here? It would take a lot of fear to get back to there. Not quite the same, right? This was artificial pounds. That said, break above 26, watch for a quick run up towards 30. That would be the area I would look for the next area to go to if we're going to move. Okay. So back to our back to where we're looking for. So we can see the change in the VIX, right? It's changed characters. We are no longer coming down we are much more inclined to go up faster now than we used to so what are our conclusions that we can draw from this yes it was the etn sure uh shaylin correct it was the etns You're welcome. So what can we draw from this? The markets have changed characters here. There's no question about it, right? The low volatility market's gone. We have few stocks making 52 weeks highs. We've tested the 200 day for the first time in two plus years. We have a massive change in character in this market at this point, right? Option flow, um, still one of the fastest way to spot a new trend is telling us nothing right now, okay? What's the next move? Is it up, down, or continue sideways? That's what we're all trying to figure out here. And remember, this market could chop around and go sideways for an extended period of time. You know, so don't necessarily expect that we're going to get that instant, instant uh, rebound here, run up. Just, you know, watch the change, watch the power. Use these tools I gave you, help you decide whether you should be careful, protective, or deploy cash. Do you guys have any questions on anything we've gone over here? I hope this was helpful to you. Can all the put protection not be a sign that the market will cause them pain? I have more stuff to go over. We're not done yet. I just wanted to cover this. I have more stuff we're going to go over, guys. Don't leave. Hang around. Uh, Sometimes it's just hedging and protection, but with a market like this, it's more a sign that they're very, very scared and they're buying they're buying stuff in ways that tells me they're being much more aggressive with it. Um, you know, they're coming for it over and over throughout the days. They're not just doing a little bit here and there or big blocks. They're aggressively sweeping the puts. So instead of buying a block, a negotiated block, they're sweeping. They're trying to get protection as fast as they can. Yes, but it does. It definitely does show in play uh, counter, but that's when we see those little short squeezes. But you know what? I, again, let me bring it back to my spy chart. Okay. To your point, you're absolutely right. Too much put buying, contrarian view. And what they're doing, um, damn it. Hang tight.
okay? What they're doing here is they're using these little squeeze days to knock them out, right? But we're not really going anywhere. All we're doing, we can't get above the eight day. Since we broke the eight day all the way up here at 275, we cannot get back above it. All they're doing is they're using and squeezing some of these put buyers and just changing the way things look, quickly changing things on there. So, yep, you're right. I'm not sure what you mean by a point and figure uh, there, Ted. Uh, Peter, I get the I, I have a service I provide option flow changes are. I have a software tool that I use to provide that through. Um, you follow me on, on my private on my public Twitter feed, you'll see some of the stuff every once in a while I post for free out there. I try to post in a manner that's timely so you can act upon it. Yes, so I can tell that's exactly what I do. I look to see if they're on the bid, the ask, they're mid or below bid, what they're doing. I then look at the open interest to see whether they open and what's going on out there as well. Uh, I don't have that, Ted. I'm not sure. I'll have to look that up. Maybe I just learned something new today. Never looked at that. Thank you. All right. Back in we go. Sentiment. So let's go into some sentiment stuff here right now, real quick. Fear and greed. Kind of touched on this already. We are in a very fearful market. For a month plus now, we've been staying on this extreme fear range, below 10. Okay? That's telling. That's telling that this market, there's a lot of fear in this market, more than maybe showing in the VIX. Right? Because the VIX came down to 14. This thing, this thing still stayed down there. So this is basically telling us that there's a lot of fear still in this market right now. So be aware, right? Unfortunately, the one bad part about the CNN Fear and Greed Index, it can stay down here for a long, long time, unlike some of the other indicators we're going to go over. Stocks to its sentiment. The SPY, 47%. We were up over 60% when this sell came in, all right? The IDA, um, the Qs are down to 60%. We were up over 80 something percent, right? So we've cooled off this bull sentiment. By the way, I cannot remember the last time I saw the Qs get under 60%. It's been a long time. It very rarely goes under, sorry, under 50%. It very rarely dips that far. The IWM has been really kind of the one that always has been going lower quicker. Uh, this one can definitely go lower. I've seen this in the 30s. IWM is always the red herring, but when it runs, you can see it ramps up and can run hard. So we're at 49% there. So we're still not extremely bearish. We're just down well off our highs here. It uses, uh, Ted, the CNN uses like six or five or six different components. The VIX is one of them. So they're using the VIX to measure fear, but they have other things they have. They list them on there. If you go to their website and click on it, it'll tell you exactly what it does. Okay, oscillators. You guys know I love the oscillators on here. Okay, the oscillators have changed character as well. Last year, we had a hard time getting really overbought, you know, getting overbought. We would get oversold and quickly bounce up, but would not get overbought easily, right? This year, we can't get over, we, we, you know, we keep bouncing quickly up. Look at this. On this little bit of action the last couple of days, we went from an oversold reading of 200 on no buying in this market back to 12 on the NIMOT, which is the New York Stock Exchange Oscillator, running up fast and quick here at this point. This is a change. It means that the sell, the, the market is more leaning more bearish than bullish right now. Change from last year where we leaned more bullish than bearish. Just something to be aware of. So we're back to neutral here, meaning we can drop hard if we want to. We can also ramp up hard if we want to. We're neutral. Best signals are when you get under 200 on the um, sell side, you know, to the sell side under negative 200. Above 200 is a good time to take risk off and to be careful. All right? Namot. Namot also. Down, negative 87, not bouncing as much. Name us the NASDAQ. NASDAQ needs to have been beaten up a lot more. What name is really causing all the grief in the, in the NASDAQ? What's the name that has them all worried and is hitting a lot of stocks? 
Facebook, you got it. Facebook. No, Tesla doesn't have a big enough. David, Tesla doesn't have a big enough um, market cap. It's Facebook. And the other one is Amazon. Yeah, but mostly Facebook. Facebook's affecting Google, Twitter, Snap. Uh, Google's really worried. Lots of stuff. But mostly it's Facebook. Lots and lots of worries about Facebook. BW, you said it sounds like we're setting up for a reversal with all this bearish sentiment. We are. We were better set coming into this week than we are after the last after today. They they did a good job of pulling a lot of the bearish stuff out here. Um, give me a minute, and I'll come back to that chart, and we'll go there. Okay. So my service offering, guys. What do I do, and what do I offer? So my offer, my service is. I do every morning. I do a morning video with setups. I go over the action. I do open interest changes, post upgrades and downgrades of note that we should be wearing and news that took place overnight. And then I look at the stocks in the market. It's delivered to you every day by 8:30 on Twitter. It's usually a five to 10 minute video of what I like or don't like and what I'm looking to play and how I'm looking to play the market that day. Throughout the day, all real time option flow. As it comes in, I post it to you guys. Any news that I think is pertinent. And any type of information along with all my trades get posted throughout the day. When market conditions are ripe, I'll go live in the middle of the day and spend time live with you guys on a, uh, through on web on a webinar, talking to you guys and going over what I'm seeing and what we you know what we should be looking at here at this point. All right. Uh, also, every night I do a nightly recap. Okay, nightly recap video. So I take. 10 to 20 minutes and go over what action looked good, what's swingable, what I like, what I don't like here within that. So something I can show you guys here, I'll show you what this looks like. This is my private Twitter feed. And throughout the day, you'll see it. So here was my recap video, right? Pan hashtag. Here's the flow as it's coming in throughout the day, right? You can see some of the flow as it's coming in, reminding you of an event, crude numbers are coming in, all right? Regen. Name that doesn't see flow caught my attention today. It's on our list for tomorrow. April, 340, 340 calls swept times 410. There was over 700 of them bought, right? This is some of the stuff I do. You can see how I was playing my day. All the information coming in, all searchable, right? If I see something, I point it out. My trades were on here today. Let's see if I can go find it. So what did I do today? Nope, 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 may not come up. There it is. Okay, I shorted the spy. Where's my entrance? Come on. All right, this is taking way too long, Chris. All right, we'll move up to here. I just saw something with it. I hate when this doesn't work like I want it to. Uh, anyway, I shorted the spy today, and then I took a lotto, a lotto uh, call on Baba into the close because it was on the 200 day, and I pointed that out in here as well. Anyway, you can get an idea of what I do and what everything looks like here throughout the day. Lots of information. Uh, color on what's taking place in Mattel, telling you exactly what it's seeing on there, right? You can see some of the color on there as well associated with that. All right, so this is an example of what I do. In addition to that, I do a weekly mentoring webinar every Thursday at 6 o'clock. This is where I come on and spend a half an hour to 45 minutes with you guys going over, teaching you guys different things in the market, things I'm seeing, teaching how to do options better, going over technicals, all different information like that. Oh, I do BW. I do buys and sells. Um, let me see if I can pull it up here. I know how to get it. Sometimes I can be slow. So today, pound long. So here's my trade so far today. So today, pound long spy weekly. It was 258 puts, 200 at uh, two dollars and 76 cents. I also took a small trade on Netflix. Okay, um, pound out. Out of the spy weekly 258 puts at 315 from 276 on remainder. All right, pound trimmed. All right, first sell on my spy 258 uh, puts 
at 310 from 276. The next slot went off at 310 from 276. And then I also tell you where I'm putting my stops so you know exactly what I'm doing. Okay. Uh, stop, SPY, weekly 258 call. First I put it at 290 once I was green. Moved it up to 305 and I put the last at 315 where I eventually got stopped out on my last call. So full disclosure, I was playing small today. I had 10. I sold my first five at 310. I sold my next three at 330. And the last two I got stopped out um, at, at, at 315. So that's how I traded the SPY today to the short side. Make sense? This is what I do. So if this is something you guys are interested in, you'd like to be a part of, you can either sign up with me directly through Smart Option Trading or go to Alpha Shark Best Coaching. It's $49 for the first month or you renew that at $99 a month. Uh, AlphaShark.com slash Best Coaching. All right, so I'll send that to everybody. Appreciate it. Also, I do mentoring. If you guys want to learn how to trade options like I do, how to trade the markets like I do, technical training, candle and technical pattern trading. This is all one-on-one. -on -one. Every session is recorded and I give it to you. I do these for uh, one, you know, um, uh, a minimum of one hour sessions. I do have packages for multi-hour sessions as well. Uh, I do mentoring where I'll spend time reviewing your trades with you. So depends what you're looking for. I can help you out. I can teach you how to trade. I can do mentoring. If you're struggling, we can go over your trades and sometimes I could point out exactly what you're not thinking about or maybe what you're doing wrong. Sometimes that's all it takes is a little bit of coaching to get you there. If this is something you're interested in, just send me an email at mike at smartoptiontrading.com or hit me up with a direct message at Options Mike on Twitter. Uh, Joseph, do I trade mainly options? I love trading options. I also often will take shares. I'll take a thousand shares and scalp with that a lot of times when I see something I like if I'm not comfortable with the options on that day. Uh, I'd also do a lot of long-term investments. I do post all my trades recap every week and all my open positions on a weekly basis. So I post that every Friday. Ted, I believe that um, AK is going to be handling that in the next one. I'm going to remind him. But if you send me an email, which I think you're ready to Mike at smartoptiontrading.com, I will make sure I follow up with you once I get in touch with him and I can get that information for you. I th he's planning a boot camp he has coming up for the next webinar. I think he accidentally put it on and attached it to mine. But I will not let you guys go out in vain. Deal? All right. So we got about five minutes left. I hope you guys enjoyed my presentation today. I do want to go over a couple charts with you guys real quick, and then I'm going to turn you loose as my throat is shot, but I enjoy doing this with you. So you guys are asking me, thanks, Doyle, I appreciate it. Where are we going here? I'm going to make this real simple for you guys. Right now, we are squeezing between the 200-day and the 8-day. Can you see the gold line coming down in the, in the green line? I am playing the range until we break this. Bottom line, until we break out of this range, I'm looking for names to play. I'm shorting the SPY when I feel like it because the SPY is paying on shorts right now because we're getting big, big volatile moves. I'm looking for other names to go long. I tried to go long Netflix today. It didn't work. I took a $60 loss, got out of the freaking way. Uh, trying to buy some names like BABA. I have a, a small trade on BABA overnight, trying to get a bounce off the 200-day. But I do think this, if they didn't want to buy the market any of these days through here, why are they going to buy it now? They obviously must want it lower. Yes, it does look like we're trying to put a double bottom in. Have we retested the lows? No. Do we have to retest the lows? No, we don't. But right now I can tell you the call buying today was better than we've seen it in a while, but it was still nothing special. Wave, you can follow my trades with one option. You, you can follow them whatever you want. Um, so depending on whatever you're looking for, you don't need to have a large account. My trading is not about size. It's about consistency and making money and finding ways to make money, Wave. It's not about the size of the account.
So basically, that's my thoughts here. Um, again, lack of leadership. And I just want to go over a couple things with you real quick before I set you free. XLE continues to sit in this tight range, cannot get going, keeps breaking back above and coming back down the 200-day. This is a sector for me that remains ripe for a reversal. If there's a sector that has corrected and been corrected now for a while, this is it. Something to keep your eyes on. Yes, it can break down. If oil breaks down, it's going to break down with it. So watch oil. But if oil continues to hold in, eventually I think they come back for this. So something to keep an eye on. XL, yeah, XLF, they don't want it. Makes Doesn't make a lot of sense here why, guys. But right today was the first day I saw aggressive call buying into the banks. Bank of America, Morgan Stanley, a little bit into JP Morgan and GS today. Mostly into Morgan Stanley and Bank of America. Another one that's corrected. With rising interest rates, they should love the banks, and they haven't wanted them all year. So keep an eye on it. Again, just trying to give different ideas here, things to look at. Technology and the queues have been the worst. Yep, lots of bear flags, Gordon. Dangerous perhaps, but you know, if we're going to reverse, something has to lead us out. It cannot be a couple names, right? We need sectors to come in. And this was the sector today they were trying to get us to lead us out of here. Just, no, I wouldn't bring it up if, if I didn't see it today, right? Make sense? They were trying to lead us out with this today. Micron was another name today. They were trying to play, trying to get it going. It's kind of in la-la land, but I like it off this area. This is your previous breakout, right? Broke out above here. 50 days coming up. If we can hold here, we may have a possible reversal here. Looking to get back into this one at some point. Again, parabolic moves, giving about half of it back. Good place to try to get into it. Other than that, guys, play the action. Play careful. If you're not comfortable with this market, cash is a position. Yeah, uh, Joseph, AK is next on the webinar. He's probably doing it for that, but I'll, I'll make sure for you. Thanks, Scott. Thank you, guys. Twitter, Eric, I'll give you one. Twitter, I, you know I love Twitter, guys. Um, I haven't done much of anything with Twitter now for a while. Uh, I have a little bit of common left. And I have three June 40 calls because if it got bought out, I would hit myself over the head. Um, Twitter's no showing no signs of life right now, guys. It filled. It hasn't quite filled this gap. It's really close to it, a couple cents away. Didn't quite get there. It's caught up in this Facebook news. Yep, Mike at smartoptiontrading.com, Scott. You got it. It's caught up in this Facebook news right now, so just be aware. Until that changes, um, it could have a problem there. All right. Guys, it's been a great evening. I'm tired. Long day. I'm going to wish you all a wonderful night. Make sure you guys follow me on Twitter, at Options Mike. Get you lots of information out there. Be safe. Hang in there. Eventually, this market will change and just be ready to go for it. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Glad to do it. I'll see you guys all tomorrow morning. Have a good night, guys.